Hi and welcome back. Uh, what we're going to do in this segment is we're going to resolve the attending foreign key and the MD1 foreign key and get the doctor's, both doctors' last name onto the query. Now we've got a bit of a dilemma here because we have two foreign keys that we need to resolve back to a single table and we can only refer to that table one time without creating a, a, a syntax problem. So how would we go about dealing with that? Well, let's go have a look. So we're going to create a new join statement and we'll start with the by resolving the attending. So say join and again 456 is our row count and we don't want to drive below that. So we're going to join the healthcare database, the provider table. But what we're going to do is we're going to create an alias name here. And since it's attending, we'll just call it the name of the, the table, attending. So what I've done is I've created an alias name called attending to the provider database. So this is going to open up the provider table, not database, it's going to open up the provider table and its reference name as far as the syntax goes is going to be named attending. So now when I refer to it anywhere in the code I'm going to refer to it not as provider but as attending. You'll, you'll some, sometimes see this done in, in queries where they'll open up the table provider and they'll give it an alias name P so they don't have to type so much and I'm not a huge fan of, of, of doing that though it's actually something that's, that's done fairly prevalent on a, on a pretty prevalent basis. So that's how you create a, an alias name for a table. So we're attending provider underscore PK and if we're not sure what that is we can either refer back to our ER diagram or we can just look at the table schema is equal to the attending FK. Alright so let's, uh, let's run that query and our row count remains the same, so all is well and good there. So at that this point, we can get the last name. That's uh, column name last name. And again, we have to refer to it based on our alias name, which is attending. So attending dot last name as attending. Now let's just run that. And let me show you real quick. Uh, I'm going to take off the attending and run it and so you can see the error we're going to get. See, column last name in the field is ambiguous and the reason why it's telling us that the last name column is, in, is ambiguous is because we have a column name last name in the provider table and if we also go take a look at the patient table which we also have opened and joined you'll see that there's a last name column in there as well of course we could have seen that just by going up and looking at the at the query itself so again that's why I said it's important to add in when you're referencing column names and you have joins going using the nomenclature table name dot column name when you're doing that to avoid any ambiguity. Alright, now and we can we no longer need this, so we can get rid of that. And let's run it. And now we only have one more foreign key left to resolve. And I'm just going to cheat a little bit since we already have the table opened up. 
we're just going to open it up again and make a few changes. So now we're looking at the MD1 column and let's just say for sake of example that that's actually the surgeon where we store the surgeon. So we'll name it surgeon and again we have to reference it by the alias name we used not by the table name, surgeon. And now if we run that, our row count remains at 456, so all is well and good. And again, a little cut and paste. We no longer need the hospitalization foreign key. And surgeon. Now let's run that. And there we have our, our data back and the surgeon and the attending appear to be one and the same. Let's just kind of glow down and make sure we haven't uh, Ah, they're all the same and why is that? Because we forgot to change our reference from attending FK1 <laughs> common mistake to make when you're doing cut and paste. MD1 dot foreign key. So let's run that. Oh, we definitely have a problem now. We went from 456 rows down to 29 rows. And so how would we deal with that? Well, let's put a left join back on and see what happens. And you can see that the uh, surgeon column is null. It's not populated. And it, that's typically that's how this particular table in this particular database has been, has been designed. Now, just to kind of show you, because this is an interesting thing, and, and sometimes y you can build databases in, in, in very different ways, let's just have a look at the provider table and, and, and see what's in there. So we've got that opened up, and there's our providers, and there's our provider numbers. Well, well let's go back to this table now that we have the, the left join on, and let's actually look at the, the data in this column. And, and let's determine why why it's why it's actually null and so we can just do that by adding this field in and getting the foreign key back so we can do a little a little analysis and the foreign key is actually it's it's set to zero over here and if we go to our provider table and and just to make sure it should be in in sequence order we can say order by provider PK just to make sure and run that and it, it is in the correct order and again there is no provider PK zero and so that's why we were dropping all of those rows again we had an orphan situation where the data was being stored as a zero and we don't have a corresponding row over here so the record set was coming back null, null for us. So I've, I've now shown you how to open up and resolve multiple foreign keys back to a single table and how to join multiple tables. So you're ready now to go off and uh, do your next set of exercises and have fun and I'll see you on the flip side. Bye.